Finally, Wiccan has arrived. I couldn't help but cheer when I saw the ending of episode five of Agatha All Along. Not because it revealed that Tina's actually Billy, but because the scene itself was just incredible. Honestly, we all kind of knew Teen was Billy, right? But who would have thought Marvel would show Billy so openly this early on? They didn't even wait until the final episode to drop that reveal. What's even more surprising is how Marvel proved there's something special about Agatha all along. I take back all the criticism I threw at it. Props to Marvel for delivering. Two thumbs up. There's so much I want to talk about from this episode, from Wiccan's long-awaited appearance to the first mention of Nicholas Scratch, though it was just his spirit's voice, to the growing mystery surrounding Lady Death. And we can't forget the arrival of Salem's Seven, which really cranked up the tension early in the episode. Oh, and of course, the sad news that we had to say goodbye to Alice Wu Gulliver in this episode. Honestly, Alice Wu was my favorite of all the Coven members. She was always the most mature, protective of the others, and definitely the least dramatic. Plus, she had just broken the curse on her family. What a loss. Before we dive in, make sure you've subscribed to the channel. We're deep into everything MCU here, and Agatha All Along is one of the shows we're currently focusing on. All right, without further ado, let's jump into it. Once again, Marvel takes us back to a pivotal moment from Agatha's past, Salem, Massachusetts, 1693. This is the scene where Agatha is about to be executed by her coven members, including her own mother, Evanora Harkness. But as we know, that execution turned into a nightmare for the coven because they ended up dead by Agatha's hand. Marvel chose to start with this flashback, even before the recap. And there's a reason for it. This moment is key to building Agatha's character, putting the audience on an emotional roller coaster as we see her journey and transformation unfold throughout episode five. We start off with Salem Seven breaking into the Witch's Road, which heightens the fear among the Coven members. They're forced to flee from these terrifying witches who are hunting them down. Salem Seven and Agatha all along have a slightly different backstory than they do in Marvel comics. In this version, they're the children of the witches we saw Agatha kill in the opening scene. After their parents died, Agatha took them in and raised them. But driven by revenge, they've turned on her hunting her down for the deaths of their parents. In the comics, though, Salem Seven are actually Agatha's grandchildren, the children of Nicholas Scratch. Together with Nicholas, Salem Seven are the ones who execute Agatha. And interestingly, in the comics, what's left of Agatha's power merges with Wanda Maximoff, forming Billy and Tommy. Now, we get an action-packed chase scene, I especially love the use of the spell Hexen Beeson. Instead of the classic image of witches flying on broomsticks, Agatha's coven uses tree roots. Yet despite the difference, it still feels very Disney and very magical. Before the scene, we see that most of the coven still views Agatha as an evil figure. Jennifer even calls her a serial killer, but Rio Vidal's interpretation of Agatha's actions is more accurate in my opinion. The events in Salem in 1693 weren't intentional. It was Agatha defending herself to survive. Of course, the other coven members don't agree with Rio, but this moment shows us just how close Rio and Agatha were in the past, and that Rio truly understands Agatha without judgment. Though they manage to escape Salem's N7 for a moment, the witch's road pulls them back. Yep, it's time for the next trial. Picture this, a creepy little cabin in the middle of the woods, radiating an eerie vibe. When they finally enter, their clothes instantly transform into a groovy 70s style. But wait, whose trial is this? Turns out this trial is Agatha's. Rio Vidal figures it out after spotting a blood moon, an omen symbolizing the thinning veil between the living and the dead. But why Agatha? Well, out of all the coven members, she holds the record for the highest body count. Whether this logic is solid or not, feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments. Then, out of nowhere, a Ouija board flies across the room. Now they have to complete the trial 
using this spooky board. After teen reads the rules, the game begins. Always end your session with goodbye. At first, it seems like a simple task, but things quickly get intense for Agatha. We're not entirely sure what she's facing in this trial at the start. In fact, she tries to delay the Ouija session by pretending to be possessed by the spirit of Mrs. Hart. Luckily, Rio Vidal sees through her act. And so the trial begins. I was on the edge of my seat when Agatha asked the board, who is with us? And what did the board spell out? Yep, death. Could this mean we're finally being introduced to death in the MCU? Hold on though, don't get too excited just yet. You'll need to wait until the end of the episode for more. The second clue and the next question was, what does death want? The Ouija board answered with punish and things get even creepier when it's revealed that death wants Agatha punished. And suddenly all the coven members prepare to serve Agatha some long overdue justice. Well, maybe not teen. This is where the tension skyrockets. This time, Agatha becomes genuinely possessed. The episode really taps into those classic 80s and 90s horror movie vibes. I'll admit, I got a little freaked out watching it. Did you feel the same? No! <laughs> then, out of nowhere, the ghost of Agatha's mother, Evanora Harkness, appears. At the same moment, Agatha snaps back to reality. Turns out it was Evanora's spirit that possessed her earlier. If you were hoping for a heartwarming mother-daughter reunion, prepare for disappointment. Evanora is not here for hugs. She's out for revenge, blaming Agatha for everything that happened in 1693. She's furious at the coven members for helping Agatha regain her powers through the Witch's Road. So what's the next trial? The coven has to complete the Witch's Road, but this time they have to do it without Agatha. That means they're leaving her behind to face Evanora alone. In this tense moment, only three members refuse to abandon Agatha. First up is Rio Vidal. She stands her ground, saying Evanora can't have Agatha. There's clearly some history between them, and it seems Rio knows more about Evanora than she's letting on. Just when it looks like Evanora might attack Rio, Agatha steps in to protect her. Then there's Teen, still looking like the innocent kid he's pretending to be. And finally, we have Alice Wu. Honestly, this moment was epic. After breaking the curse in the last trial, Alice's powers seem fully restored. She even pulls off the Knight of Wands spell to stop Evanora from taking over Agatha again. What do we do? Do we banish her? But here's the twist. When Evanora is stopped, it's Agatha who suddenly turns on Alice. Her dark side takes over and she can't resist the urge to absorb Alice's magic. Alice collapses, she's gone. In those final moments, we hear Nicholas Scratch's voice coming from the Ouija board. <gasps> Snapping Agatha out of her trance, just as she's absorbing Alice's power. But sadly, it's too late. For a brief second, we see the regret wash over Agatha as she looks at Alice's lifeless body on the floor. The rest of the coven is furious, especially Teen. Next thing you know, Teen is outside the creepy cabin, unleashing his rage at Agatha. He knows she intentionally absorbed Alice's powers and he's not holding back. And here we are at the climax of the episode. This moment confirms my earlier theory. Agatha has known who Teen really is all along. She points out that Teen's attitude mirrors someone else, Wanda Maximoff, AKA Scarlet Witch. This revelation shows that Agatha has been aware that Teen is actually Billy from the very beginning. And of course, Rio Vidal knows this too. The tension spikes during one particular conversation. Agatha tests Teen, questioning his willingness to sacrifice others for his own gain. Teen starts to realize the harsh truth. All these witches would gladly trade lives for their own interests, a fact that deeply disappoints him. 
Jennifer Kale echoes teens' frustrations, pointing out that the coven members only care about regaining their powers through the witch's road. With anger boiling inside him, Billy can't hold back any longer. He reveals his true identity as Wiccan, tapping into his magical powers. In a fierce display, he uses his Wiccan magic to force all the coven members to seize Agatha, tossing her into a pit of quicksand. Agatha starts to sink. But Billy isn't finished yet. Still fueled by rage, he hurls the other coven members into the muck as well, leaving only Teen standing alone. All right, let's wrap up our recap of episode five. I'll keep it detailed to help us all grasp what happened, focusing on the pivotal moments that are crucial for the journey of Agatha all along moving forward. First off, it turns out that Teen's seemingly innocent persona was actually a clever ruse to draw Agatha into the witch's road. He didn't need anything from that realm to enhance his magic. Teen had already tapped into his Wiccan powers right from the start. By the end of this episode, he even dons a crown, echoing his mom, Scarlet Witch. Secondly, it seems likely that Teen put the sigil on himself to keep his true identity hidden from Agatha. Unfortunately for him, Agatha saw through the sigil and figured out that Teen is Billy, even despite the magical barrier. We saw hints of this in the ending of episode four. Instead of turning against him, Agatha ends up showing a protective, almost motherly affection toward Teen, like he's her own child. This connection might stem from their bond when Billy was younger, or drawing from the comics, Billy could be a product of Agatha's leftover magic. I'll dive deeper into that in a special video. Be sure to check the link in the upper right corner. Oh, oh, that's behind him. <laughs> Third, Agatha is quite a layered character. She can come off as good at times, but her dark past often leads her down a sinister path. This complexity makes it tough to predict her role in the finale of Agatha all along, or whether she'll pop up in future MCU films. Fourth, don't assume that Billy is destined to be the hero of this series just yet. There's a strong chance he could end up playing the villain. His tricks, powers, and motivations for engaging with the witch's road could indicate that trouble is brewing. If his goal isn't just to revive Wanda Maximoff, he might create even bigger issues that link him to other MCU narratives. Fifth, we still haven't laid eyes on death. My previous theory about Rio Vidal being death remains uncertain. In episode five, it was actually Evanora Harkness who invoked the name. Evanora Harkness of the... Sixth, it's highly likely that the Coven members will make a comeback in the next trial or episode. How that plays out is anyone's guess, but one thing is clear, Billy is now in control of this Coven. Seventh, it seems the reveal of Mephisto parallels that of Nicholas Scratch. So far, both characters in Agatha all along seem to rely on name drops without actually appearing on screen. But who knows, we still have several episodes ahead. So what are your thoughts? What stood out to you in this episode? More importantly, which theories do you think might come into play in the next one? I'd love to hear from you in the comments. This has been a lengthy video, so if you've made it this far, it's clear we share a love for the MCU. Don't forget to subscribe to Cinemamu for daily updates. We'll be diving into plenty of exciting discussions about the MCU and superheroes. Thanks for tuning in, keep exploring, and I'll see you next time.